Hello, this is LJ Boffel with a Microsoft Excel video on doing lookups, uh, primarily V lookups, although we'll do a, an H lookup as well. Um, and this is being done in Windows. Uh, the, the same information should work throughout operating systems. You just may have to look in a couple of different places on a Mac to, to find the, the options that you need. So, what are VLOOKUPs? VLOOKUPs is a lookup of information in columns of a specific location so that you could pull the, some of that information and transfer it into the cell you're doing the lookup from. What exactly does that mean? Okay, on the screen here, I've got my, my um, I have selected cell D6. And if I want to know what genre belongs to genre code number one, I have to get that information from a genre table that's over here to the right. And the, the code, um, genre, uh, code number one happens to be for the adventure genre for, for films, right? So what I have to figure out is how do I make a formula to pull this word adventure over here? And the only thing I have linking the two tables is the genre code. So it sounds a lot more complex than it is, but it's sort of a little bit like working with a database. A database, you have a whole bunch of different tables and you write queries that, that can ask tables that have something that links them together to pull information from those table, tables and then respond with like a new table combining that information for you so you can analyze it or report on it or do something with it. While this isn't a database, this is probably the closest way I could say um, the same thing, that you basically have to use something that is linked in one table to another table in terms of the same type of information in order to pull information that's in another part of the second table into the first table. And VLOOKUP technically is supposed to be able to work across columns, but it most consistently works when you're looking at two columns only and that you're looking in and you're able to look at the information that's linked to the original table would be in the leftmost column and then to the right of it would be the information you're looking for. <laughs> and you try to do it any other way, like have columns in between, like if I were to have three or four columns between code and genre here, the VLOOKUP normally won't work. Now, Microsoft has created something called the XLOOKUP, which is, you know, came out with Microsoft Excel 2021, and it's supposed to be able to look across columns and across rows, but one of the problems is it's not backward compatible. And two, it's actually a, a rather more complex way of doing things. So at this point in time, because it's still fairly new in business, we aren't con um, covering it here. We're just going to stay with the standard V lookup and then the H lookup. V means you're looking within a column of information and H lookup would be like down here where you're looking in a row of information with the top row being the equivalent of the leftmost row in a columnar table and then the second row the lower row would be the equivalent of the rightmost row column over here it'll make more sense when we work on it so let's start working on it how do i get the word adventure over here, and then be able to populate the rest of this column with the formula that would pull in the proper things here, the different genres. We're going to use the function builder, and I'm going to type in VLOOKUP. And we need to figure out what the lookup value is. Well, the thing is, is this D six is the cell we want the results to come into. So we're not looking in here. What we want to do is we want to look up C1, which happens to be the genre code. Then we need to go find what table array it's in, which happens to be over here. Oops, I messed up already. 
So you have to actually make sure to go into the next field here. So let's go back. Lookup value is here. Click into table array. Select the table array. Now the column index number. This basically needs to be two because we have two columns here. Two. And then range lookup is, is optional. What this simply means is do we want an approximate answer or do we want an exact answer? An exact answer is what you usually want. And you would use the word false for it. I don't know why. It, to me, it seems like the exact answer should be true, but it's false. So you would type in false. And here's what we get when we look at this preview. Looking at the genre code number one that happens to be in cell C6, and then looking in this table array or named range, as we've heard it referred to before, for that same code, and then looking at the next column over, the second column in this array, it pulls and then say we want an exact ma match for column, the code one, and we want that to be pulled over here, we should get adventure. Okay. And the good news is Excel went and populated the rest of the column with it. That is your first VLOOKUP. Nifty, huh? So what happens if you actually have a table that has a whole bunch of rows? As long as the array that you need to look at, the data range you need to look at, the two columns you need to look at are next to each other, you could actually, within any table or data set, make a named range and use that in your VLOOKUP very successfully. The only problem will be is if you were looking in a table and the columns were not next to each other, then that's where you'd have a different problem. But that's normally not what you're going to face with most VLOOKUPs, so we're going to keep it simple. We're going to come over here now and look for the quality. The quality codes are in the quality table over here. F for fair, G for good, N for new. And this is the, regarding the DVDs or the videos that we saw um, in an earlier uh, uh, video. And so in this case, we want to do another VLOOKUP. We already have VLOOKED up down here. So we're going to look up the value here in E6. Then we're going to capture the table array of quality. And then once again, we're going to look in the second column. And once again, we want an exact match. And we should get the answer fair. And then Excel went and populated this whole thing. Finally, we'll do the same thing one more time in terms of the media code. Is it a Blu-ray? Is it a DVD? Is it a VHS? So, the lookup, lookup value. And incidentally, you could be looking up anything over here. This just happens to be right next to this because this is the way I wrote it. This column that you're looking up from could actually be somewhere else in this table as long as it's to the left of the column that the formula for the VLOOKUP is in. But we're just going to come here and select that. Go to the table array from media. Column index number two. Again, false is what will give us the exact answer. If we were to put leave it empty, it would probably give us the same answer, but it may not paste down perfectly. So it's better to always just go ahead and put that false in just to make sure you're telling it very clearly. And that is your VLOOKUP. Now, let's take a breather for a moment, and then I will show you the HLOOKUP. Now let's take a look at HLOOKUP. HLOOKUP is horizontal lookup, so we'll be looking in rows instead of columns. But otherwise, the process works pretty much exactly the same way. So I'm going to go to the function, insert function. I'm going to go and look for HLOOKUP. 
and you'll see that you're filling in the same kind of information. You need the lookup value that this uh, cell that has the formula in, we need to look at uh, a value that's related to it that's also in another table. Now the interesting thing here is that right next to it, we'd be looking at the lookup value of cell B25, and the number in there is 255, but there's no 255 in here. So we're asking Excel to look up and make an assumption that 255 falls in here somewhere between 250 and 280, and therefore would likely get a comment of on target. But it's not perfect. So as a result, when we were doing VLOOKUPs, or when you do VLOOKUPs, you usually want to use false in order to get the exact match. In this case, an exact match would not work out. Let's finish up and see what that happens. Let's go check the table array here. We select this. And it's called a table array in here, but this is actually, I think, not a, a, is it a formal table. Yes, it is. I clicked in it, and it is a formal table even though I took off all of the little um, filtering buttons. And then the row index number is row 2. The same way it is in VLOOKUP, it's column 2. Here it needs to be row 2. And then in this case, we're going to look at false, if we want perfect, right? If we want it to be an exact match. And then we click OK, and that's not going to work because there is no exact match. So I can come here, open this formula up, and type in true, and then we should see this comment on target come. Now, I'm going to copy this formula down, paste it in, and call it good, right? Wrong. Because here's something. Monty Green has 235 points, which falls between 210 and 250. So Monty gets the message, needs help. And then we've got Tamia and Duke. They have um, points that are between 250 and 280, so they get on target. But John Dory and Perina Nail, they um, both have points that are greater than 280, and they should get this comment excellent, and they're not. And yet, we're looking for an approximate match. Now, if I were to come in here and take the word true out, would that make a difference? No. So what's wrong here? Well, it's kind of hard to see unless you know what you're looking for. But let me try something here. OK, when I click on score, this cell that reads score, it's general. These are all general, but they really should be numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, because they, they, we're looking up numbers, so I'm going to look up, put numbers there. It's still being problematic, because even though I've stated these are numbers, I'm getting a little green tab up here by the 280, and if I, have, if I click on it, I get this little drop down here. Numbers stored as text. So even though I told it to store it as number, it doesn't seem to have picked it up. So I'm going to convert to number and see if that helps. And it did. For whatever reason, now this is this general again up here, but it's apparently Excel is now reading it with that little correction properly, and therefore we're getting the proper comments. So that's one of those weird little errors you might get. The formula for HLOOKUP was perfect but we weren't getting the results we needed. So sometimes you have to look and see if you see any little flags and try to click them and work through what the problem might be. So that's each lookup. Thank you, and I hope this helped you out.